Man lived as a beggar for two years until he found out he was a billionaire. Tim went to the nearby homeless shelter to gather his thoughts after waking up in the hospital with no memory of where he had come from or what he had done. Until an unexpected car showed up at the auto repair shop where he worked, he spent two years living as a beggar. The majority of individuals believe that amnesia only occurs in fiction, but it occurred to me, and still I have no idea who I am or where I come from. Tim reflected as he pushed his grocery cart, which contained his sparse possessions. He had no recollection of his life until he awoke in a hospital two years prior with an odd head trauma. His memories will come back, the doctors advised. If he had patience, he arrived at the clinic nevertheless without a wallet, cash, or means of identification. Tim had to start his life over as a result. He chose a name and made an effort to get up again. The local homeless shelter was his only choice, and the employees did everything they could to assist him. That was a dead lead because no one was matching his description was reported missing by the neighborhood police. Nobody could really do much for Tim. He had no memory of anything, but there was a pain in his heart that wouldn't go away. He had some inkling that something strange or tragic had occurred. It may have been the cause of his memory loss. Suddenly, a picture of an elderly man with a smile flashed into his head. Tim didn't have his life together, but he soon had to leave the shelter because individuals could only stay there briefly. As a result, he started living on the streets and begging for food and money from generous strangers. He eventually stole a grocery cart and began loading it with his possessions. Despite having little, they belonged to him. Some individuals gave him modest one-time jobs, but they couldn't fully employ him because he didn't have any information about himself or a place to live. Tim lived in five different places over the course of the next two years, but he never recalled where he was when he had amnesia. Something lovely about it existed. There was a small main town called Cape Elizabeth that was close to the coast. He appreciated the soothing sounds of the waves and was frequently seen by his peers. He had, however, moved on in an effort to survive. When he eventually arrived in Pennsylvania, a nice mechanic offered him both a job and a place to stay. He initially merely assisted the other repairman and cleaned up grease. But they soon learned Tim had excellent auto knowledge, which even he was startled to find out. He so began working on services such as tire changes, window washing, polishing, and more. Later, they allowed him to identify problems while being watched and were astounded by his accuracy. Tim soon had requests from regular clientele, and it appeared that his life was improving. He had long since given up on the possibility of recovering his identity. His new existence wasn't all that horrible, though. He was hired by Mr. Caruso, the shop owner, who was a kind person. At the end of the shift, he frequently bought him a beer. Two mechanics who often made him laugh, Bob and Austin, became friends with him. They outnumbered him in terms of age. Tim was unsure of his exact age, but he appeared to be in his 40s. Tim felt at ease around Bob and Austin, even though they were both in their 20s and were still cool guys to talk to. He told them in detail about his life during the last two years. Tim had largely accepted his fate as a person who had lost all of his memories, but that was all new and the younger men wanted to help him. I believe we should have a doctor examine you. I know it'll be costly, but we can put money aside for a while and make an appointment, Austin nodded as Bob made a suggestion. Yeah, we can achieve it, even if it's a neuro uh, brain doctor or something. An appointment can't be that expensive, Austin threw in. We'll wait to hear what he says, and then we'll schedule any necessary tests or procedures. Hey guys, I value your kindness, but I'm actually fine and starting to believe that perhaps it was intended for me to forget about my previous existence. Tim shook his head as he was preoccupied by a recent client arrival. Tim reiterated the same statement when his friends subsequently checked on him to see if he was certain. Although his life had a strange and complicated beginning, he was proud of where he was now. He had a great place to live and was no longer begging on the streets. He may try to save money in order to visit a doctor and make sure everything was well. His top priorities, though, were to keep working and save enough cash for a deposit on a real apartment. He had an intense love for automobiles, and perhaps he had worked as a mechanic in the past. In either case, the universe had brought him to the right place. He was certain of it. A few months after that, 
an older man driving a vintage car with a spotless exterior pulled up to the garage. Tim avoided having a direct conversation with the client. They went to Mr. Caruso's office and left him there to attend to business because they appeared to be pals. He thought with relief and began to check everything. The car appeared to be in good shape, but Tim scowled at something in the engine. It was a Band-Aid, one that had seen better days. Normally, he wouldn't take it off and continue, but there was something strange about it. So, you were involved in a drunk driving collision? Austin made a hunch. Suddenly, a picture of an elderly man with a smile flashed into his head. Tim was shorter than him, or perhaps Tim was a kid back then. But above all, he recalled a profound talk. He questioned in a high-pitched voice, Grandpa, what's going on? Kid, oh boy, I'm not sure. We'll probably can't fix this by ourselves, the elderly man responded. Why? What's the issue? You claim that every guy should be able to fix cars, and you're an expert, Timmy the kid went on. Don't you recall how your mother cured your cold when you had it? But afterwards, you needed to get your leg checked out by a doctor. Tim nodded in response to the older man's query. Oh, that's how it is. Little problems are fixable, but this car is broken. He requires an auto doctor. Tim the toddler quickly ran to his room after saying, I have an idea. Little Tim's childhood house flashed through his recollection, bringing back even more familiar sights. But the youngster came back and put a bandage where his father had touched it. My mother bandaged my broken leg and drove me to the hospital, Grandpa. We can now leave. The elder man grinned broadly and gave the child a nod. Let's go then, Alex. Tim responded, standing upright and without focusing on anything, Alex, that's my name, his expression, though, was startled. Now his memories came flooding back even more quickly. His entire life had returned to his consciousness as if all of his destroyed computer information had been recovered. Everything was there. His title, his household, his friends, and maybe most importantly, the insight that he shouldn't have been begging on the streets or even subsisting on minimum pay. Tim, sometimes known as Alex, was a wealthy businessman. Mr. White, he was abruptly awakened from his trance by a voice, and he recognized Jerry as the older man who had delivered the car, his driver from when he first started to succeed years back. He gasped, Jerry, in disbelief. What are you doing here, Mr. White? You work on cars? Why? What took place? Jerry asked with concern. You're aware of Tim? Frowning, Mr. Caruso questioned. Tim? Nate, that's my former boss, Mr. White, Jerry pointed at Alex and added. What? Boss? Mr. Caruso was unable to comprehend. Hearing the disjointed conversation, Bob and Austin came over. Alex sighed heavily as everyone turned to look at their friend for an explanation. My memory's back. It's returned, Alex declared. The vehicle did it. Jerry's vehicle? Mr. Caruso asked a query. Yes, many years ago in New York, Jerry served as my driver. I gave him my grandfather's old car when he retired as a thank you, Alex clarified. I was unaware that my granddad never removed the bandage. Alex had to start over because everyone was still perplexed. He described the first memory that appeared and how the Band-Aid helped him remember everything. He also disclosed his true identity. In addition, he had to tell Jerry everything that had occurred over the previous two years. Jerry's shock was too great to control. Mr. White, you're crazy. Why weren't you found by anyone? Is Cindy still employed by you? I'm just now giving her a call, taking out his phone, his retired driver said. Everybody was as shocked as Cindy was. She and the other executives had searched for Alex, but they believed he had left the country on his own accord. Jerry added, Cindy claimed he found a note on your computer where you were talking of dropping everything and going to your grandmother's hometown. Evidently, they managed to hold everything together until you got back. She claims she made sure to deposit your winnings every time. They're eager to see you again. Alex sat down and nodded. That's good. All work in the shop ceased after Mr. Caruso removed a few chairs while they worked out some issues. Bob suddenly broke the silence. Can you remember what occurred if you remember everything now? Why did you lose your memory? What was the mishap? All eyes went to him as he inquired. I recall... I wish I had permanently forgotten about that, Alex added, piqued everyone's interest. I did mention wanting to leave and going back to my hometown in my computer notebook. It's exhausting to live in a city, and I missed Maine and the chilly ocean.
Jerry nodded. That's where you were raised? Yeah, I was raised by my grandparents in a simple house and neighborhood. Grandma took care of both of us while Grandpa taught me how to fix vehicles and fish. He carried on with his tail. I wanted the solace she gave me back. Not everything is about money. You eventually start to feel lost. Fine, but what just transpired, Bob pleaded with everyone laughed. I ran into some old acquaintances. My grandparents' homes were sold when they were still alive, not comprehending how much I would miss them. Yet a few of my old pals were still in the area. We had a lot of fun, and they enjoyed hearing about my accomplishments. I was a novelty because not many people ever leave that community. It gave me a small sense of pride, Alex started. We ingested. We applauded. A hectic night it was. So, you were involved in a drunk driving collision? Austin made a hunch. When the police were summoned, they finally had a date and some names to look for in this bizarre ancient case. Not at all, please. I was out for a walk with some pals, if you can tell them that. They abruptly began discussing how they couldn't believe it was true that I was successful while they weren't. After that, before I awoke in the hospital, the last thing I can recall is a severe headache at the back of my head, Alex said. No, together Bob and Austin said. Yep, I'm very certain they snatched them and fled because I didn't have my wallet or my Rolex when I woke up. They may have even believed I was dead, Alex stated while looking grave. Jerry cried out, his palm covering his lips in agony. That's terrible. Humans are horrible. Envy taints everything, as he added. Mr. Caruso shook his head. Alex whispered, sure. I felt as though my mind had already understood what had transpired because when I first got out of the hospital, I was so dejected that I walked about. But it didn't seem to be grief at losing my memories. There was more. This memory was it. I believe that the amnesia hastened my recovery. Do you recognize them by name? We must contact the police, everyone agreed with Jerry's statement. Yeah, the police are being called, Alex gave a nod. His retired driver continued, I can take you back to the city and help you with everything, Mr. White. And Alex was moved. I recall having already told you this. Call me, please, Alex, Jerry. Alex grinned and gave the man's shoulder a touch of appreciation. Thank you as well. I appreciate you keeping this car in good shape. I appreciate you finding me even if you weren't aware of it. Jerry pursed his lips. No, Alex. You offered me this car and a whole retirement package when I retired, which really aided my wife and me. And it was a blessing to work for you because of your generosity. God rewards people for their acts of kindness. Alex was at a loss for words. He thanked Bob, Austin, and Mr. Caruso for everything as he left their small room in the back after gathering his belongings. He left with Jerry after making a quick commitment to return. When the police were summoned, they finally had a date and some names to look for in this bizarre ancient case. Fortunately, his former friends didn't put up a fight and pled guilty to all the charges in hopes that doing so would result in reduced punishment. In all honesty, Alex didn't give a damn about them. He should have punished them, but he had already forgotten about them. He was shocked to learn that all of his executives were pleased with his return after Cindy caught him up to speed. While Alex was unusual, he seamlessly integrated into his life. No longer did he feel hopeless or lost. He even made an investment in Mr. Caruso's auto shop as his business grew. Bob and Austin received improved training and eventually landed roles with greater responsibility. Alex frequently paid them visits and even worked on cars. He had no regrets about his amnesia period. It had occurred for a purpose. Some things happened for a reason. Alex had amnesia and lived as a beggar, unaware of his millions. However, he knew he needed to live through that because it taught him so much about life, friendship, and himself. God repays the people who do good things. As Jerry said, God wanted Alex to finally regain his memories because he had been a generous person. Generous person. Generous 